and move the uh, real quick. Uh, how many of you have taken your Clifton Strengths Top Five assessment? Awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got a sheet that I'm going to pass around. As soon as I get back to my office after uh, after this, if you don't have a strengths access code, I'd love to uh, love to give you one. So then you can take the assessment and learn more about your top five, and then think about how you'd like to uh, to integrate this into the work that you do. Well, let's see. I guess we'll just pass one around. We'll be good. Do you mind if I just make a quick do it. Over you bet. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Gang, uh, my name is Mike Finnegan. As, uh, as, as Tucker said, by all means, please just, uh, please just call me Mike. Um, real quick, names are important to me. I, I absolutely love names. So if we don't mind, uh, I just ask that we go around the room real quick and uh, tell, uh, tell me your name and tell me where, you, uh, where you're spending your time this fall uh, in terms of what you're, uh, what you're doing. And Dr. Grice, if you don't mind, I love that. And if those of you don't know, uh, Dr. Grice did a wonderful uh, kind of strengths TED talk uh, last year about her work with uh, with strengths and, uh, and 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 soldiers. So cool stuff. I am Rachel Omis, and I work with Great Plains Ideas for an online consortium. And my role is I am 100% student facing, but I also do all of the professional development for all 19 Harvard universities. So we've been using strengths and uh, doing some of that. And we have one of our programs, Community Development, who we are thinking all of the universities who participate in that program, they're going to be using strengths within their curriculum. Cool. Thank you, Rachel. I love that. I love that. I'm Keely Myers. I teach uh, in the College of Ed, curriculum and instruction. And this semester, I'm spending my time working on uh, teaching uh, students how to be teachers and how to instruct. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I'm Suzanne Porat. I'm in curriculum and instruction. I am a strengths champion. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Um, so I've been encouraging the use of it in our college in different ways. And one of the ways we do it is one of our intro classes, they all have to write an essay that talks about what their strengths are and how to use them. And then we keep bringing up whenever we can. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay, I'm Shuri Pagwari. I'm a PhD student at GPA in Catherine and Textiles and Interior Design Department. So I'm, this semester I will propose my thesis and I'm working on that. Mm -hmm. Very cool. Yeah, I'm from Animal Science. Uh, I did a lot of advising and uh, 
Uh, Skype definitely can be used in our senior seminar classes to um, as well as I advise a lot of non-traditional trains for online to COVID. I think it's helpful to have some more information on how to leverage the chat. Mm -hmm. I'm Trina McCarty at Global Campus and I just discovered work as a new, a new role as an instructional designer this year. So I am trying to direct students by helping faculty with their online courses. Nice. I'm Ken Shear. I'm a third year PhD student in Econ. I'm working on research. I'm trying to remind myself that I'm doing this because I love teaching. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Zoe from Texas. Um, I love teaching in Texas. So I love my one year PhD. Very good. And so I'm a writer and I'm a fourth year that is photography teacher. So currently I love teaching, but I really like teaching and I love teaching. So uh, in this semester, I'm working on my dissertation, which is about teaching educator skills. So I'm basically working on how to improve assessment and how to uh, develop a college education students in this way to get to get that. So mm -hmm. I'm working on this I'm Tanya Ramsey from Master Program, and um, I am a half day, half hour instructor. It's my first experience in teaching. And I'm working with the students, master students, to prepare them for the top one exam. Like it's going to be in December. Yeah, I'm going to learn more. Great. Nita Sir from the Department right now. I'm not teaching, but I want to learn about how to teach effectively about assessment. Mm -hmm. Very good. Very good. Tucker? Um, I'm Trevor Jones from the Department of Psychological Sciences. I'm a <laughs> candidate. I'm also the Teaching and Teaching Alliance Center and coordinator of the Professional Development Series. Very good, very good. I'm Alice Anderson. I'm an instructional designer for K State Libraries. Not teaching any classes, I just design their online instruction. Mm -hmm. Very cool, very cool. And Tucker, remind me because I get uh, really, really excited. And then uh, uh, what, what time are we finishing up today? 4.30, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, cool. So, so gang, I am super excited to talk, uh, to talk strengths. And uh, I think strengths is just a powerful tool for, uh, for our learners because it gives our learners an opportunity to uh, uh, name special talents that they've always had inside of them. Uh, but then all of a sudden it's a shared language for us to really think, how can we engage our students in the process of learning? And it gives a tremendous efficacy and agency, I think, to their work. So today's conversation, I've kind of uh, put this uh, twofold. Number one, I want to give you some background and some depth of uh, how you might be thinking about strengths from a philosophical lens uh, as to how and or why you'd integrate it into your classes as to how it engages your students in the process of learning. But number two, I also want to talk about strengths in terms of your strengths and how they can be leveraged to improve on some really, really uh, exceptional teaching as we focus on uh, maximizing uh, uh, the engagement of students from, uh, from, from our lens by deploying our strengths in the classroom as educators. Um, so first off, just a little bit about the initiative. I think it's important to realize that uh, strengths, we've been playing with strengths for quite a while here on K-State's campus, ever since really 2009. And then we had an opportunity in 2010 to roll strengths out in uh, our Introduction to Leadership Concepts class. And that year, uh, when we uh, went back and assessed everything that we put in front of our students, our students simply said, out of everything we learned, strengths mattered. Strengths gave me the efficacy and the agency to go out and exercise leadership in powerful ways. And so then the conversation became, if this was good for our students in LEAD 212 uh, in the leadership minor, how is it that we can get this uh, out there to all students and really capitalize on the energy? Well, Rich Missler, an alum of uh, K-State, actually then financed through privately donated dollars, uh, he financed uh, strengths for the first three years. So we had $50,000 uh, for, uh, for, for three years straight to go out and buy access codes so all incoming freshmen could, uh, could take the strengths assessment. And uh, uh, if, if you think about our numbers as to, you know, average class of 35 incoming students, codes now cost $12 a, a code. Uh, basically, all of our funding and research and, 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 and dollars go right to, uh, to, to the code purchase. 
So there's very little dollars out there for kind of the administration of, uh, of, of strikes. Since then, we've had an opportunity to kind of scale up. And uh, now we want to make sure that uh, every incoming student transfer student, international student, and graduate student uh, here on K-State's campus has an opportunity to utilize the strengths initiative to, to, to take the strengths assessment as they navigate their, uh, their experience. And of course today, if some of you haven't yet taken your uh, Clifton top five strengths assessment, I've got a sign up sheet. And as soon as I get back to the office, I will make sure to send you out a strengths access code. So if you haven't identified your top five, you can do that today and then kind of reflect back on some things that you heard here today and then know about the assessment, know about the tool as to why then uh, uh, you'd uh, uh, integrate it into your teaching and or think about how it might improve your own teaching. So uh, I, I always start off with this illustration because this was a powerful representation from a, a creative representation. We asked our students, could you just go ahead and draw your strengths? Do a creative representation of how you see your strengths in your mind. And I love this illustration by, uh, by Faith because she talked about the strength of responsibility. That top column there, uh, you can see she's got a chain coming out of her mouth and it's padlocked. Because what we know about responsibility is that people who say what they're going to do will basically crawl through broken glass to make sure that they own up and follow through on that commitment. And so, you know, her word was her commitment of a uh, follow through. And so when students start to see that they've got natural talents and uh, strengths, naming those natural talents for them, I think, again, it gives a lot of efficacy and agency to students. Now. Here's, I think, an important piece for our entire strengths initiative across campus. I think a lot of universities, a lot of faculty, a lot of students uh, miss the mark when we first start jumping in and just talk about strengths. We talk about strengths, we talk about their top five. The reason why we utilize strengths here at K-State uh, is because we care about students' overall well-being their personal and professional well-being. Students right now are uh, full-time students, so uh, that's their then, uh, then, then profession. We care about our students' purpose, right? Uh, do they enjoy waking up in the morning and going to class each and every day? Uh, do they have uh, significant love in their life? Are their relationships meaningful? Uh, we all know that tuition is uh, uh, through, the, uh, through the roof, and a lot of our students suffer from, uh, from, from, from uh, uh, financial distress stress. So to what extent are students uh, uh, making sure that they've got a plan to minimize the, uh, the financial debt? Uh, you know, they're physical. Uh, do they uh, have the energy? Are they getting sleep at night? And so the minute that we start talking only about strengths is the minute that I think we've uh, missed the mark on why we're utilizing the tool. We want to talk about well-being in our classrooms, and I think that's each and every one of our responsibilities as an educator, not just to make sure that our students are coming out of class with the content knowledge that they need, but that we actually invest some time, energy, and uh, careful consideration to our students' overall well-being because we get to interact with them uh, sometimes two, three, and or four times a, a week. So if we're checking in on our students' well-being, that's a positive place for us to be across campus. And uh, if we do what we do really, really well in the classroom, I'd like to think that that increases our retention rate as a university, which then all of a sudden helps with the uh, enrollment numbers and the overall strategic enrollment man management plan. So strengths is yet a tool to help us get into this conversation of, uh, of, of, of personal and campus well-being of our students. It also, as an educator, gives me a clue to who's engaged and who's not engaged. Um, I love when, when, when a student's well-being is off, lots of times they're either struggling or they're suffering. And so these are a couple of operational definitions that as an instructor, uh, when you get into the classroom, uh, I don't know about you, but I can, I can see it clear as day. I know the students who are engaged and, uh, and thriving. I also know the students that I'm a little bit worried about. And I also know the students who are actively disengaged. One thing that I'm super concerned about as an educator is um, uh, the students who don't show up to class. And I'm a firm believer now, it's not because they don't wanna be there, but lots of our students are suffering from addiction. They're suffering from uh, depression and they have good intentions on getting into the classroom, but they're just not able to get out of bed to, to, to be where they wanna be. 
And again, I think strengths then is a tool that is an early indicator for us as faculty to talk about how students might utilize their strengths, leverage their strengths to create some strategies uh, to make sure that they get to the classroom, to make sure that they're following through on their commitments, and it's a way that we can uh, uh, engage in the language, right? So for instance, if there's a student in your classroom that you know has a strength of responsibility, and yet they're consistently late on turning assignments in on time, that's an opportunity for us as a faculty member to basically say, hey, I see you've got this strength of responsibility. I understand this, the, the definition from Gallup, and my question is, is why am I not seeing this strength of responsibility show up in how you're uh, engaging in the, uh, in the classroom and meeting deadlines? That's a fair question. And then you listen to uh, what the student has to say, and then all of a sudden, I think you can get into this conversation around, is my student thriving? Is my student struggling? Are they suffering? And then what might be other follow-up plans of action to connect with uh, uh, the Dean of Student Life? office, right, to get some extra resources for our, uh, for our students. So strengths, if leveraged in uh, healthy, productive environments, are instant clues to talent and engagement. And we should be able to then see, uh, you know, who's living their strengths and who might not be living their strengths. The same goes for us as faculty, right? If we love to teach, you should be able to see your strengths play out in unique ways that captivate your students' uh, energy and excitement for the uh, content and the curriculum that you teach. Uh, if you're not excited about teaching, then my guess is, is, is maybe your strengths aren't showing up in the uh, most positive, uh, 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 energizing uh, uh, spaces. And we all have different strengths. So I think students pick up on faculty who are, th are, who are uh, uh, authentically them, as opposed to trying to be a faculty member uh, that, they, uh, uh, that they admire, but yet don't necessarily have some of the talents and or uh, uh, skills or abilities as maybe a, a, a mentor does, right? So I think strengths allows us to think through how can we authentically engage students in the process of learning by knowing our talents and then seeing how our talents show up in the, uh, in, in the classroom. So by and large, again, strengths here at K-State is to promote overall uh, well-being so our students, our faculty, our staff can, uh, can, can, can thrive. Um, here is the landing page for the uh, Strengths Initiative on campus. And new this year is we've really put some dollars and resources towards strengths peer coaching. In fact, we've hired four undergraduate students who are then trained to be peer coaches in three distinct areas. Number one, um, helping students just realize and understand their top five strengths. Number two, what does it look like to have a specific challenge and uh, then utilize their strengths to overcome said challenge so it's timely, right? Because I think sometimes we have a strengths conversation, but until the student actually has a significant challenge or obstacle that they're trying to overcome, whether it be specifically in a classroom or even outside, they're not thinking about their strengths unless that challenge is, 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 is staring them right, right in the face. And so these peer coaches can then help coach students through an existing challenge in the classroom uh, when it's timely for our students. And then the third piece that we coach around is helping students understand their strengths as they transition from college to career. Uh, what is that looking like? How am I articulating my uh, specific talents uh, uh, to, uh, to, to, to future employers? And do I really have a good sense of self to see how uh, I'm gonna uh, excel in a future role or, uh, or, or position? So I share this with you because any student across campus can click on the peer coaching link and then be directed to a, uh, to a form that they fill out uh, and then immediately sign up for a, uh, for a peer coaching session then we will send out a confirmation email and then they'll be able to have a 30 minute conversation with a peer coach. Research shows strengths only sticks on college campuses where students have five to seven touch points uh, with their strengths throughout any given academic year. So that means that as our students are navigating through Kansas State University uh, over uh, four and or five years, we as a university want to try to create about 25 plus 
touch points where students are having intentional conversations around their top five. Uh, that's a challenge because as many of you who are in here who've already probably utilized strengths, it's great in the moment. And then two or three semesters later, you uh, ask students to re-engage in their strengths. And sometimes students will say, gosh, I took that freshman year and I forgot my strengths. <laughs> now, personally, I always kind of laugh a little bit because I'm sitting here thinking, gosh, these are your strengths. Like if you forgot your strengths, what else have you been forgetting that we've been teaching you for the last two or three years? <laughs> but uh, I think there's opportunities for us as a university community to make some progress on that. Uh, number one, I put my uh, top five strengths in my signature email line. Uh, and that could be something that we ask our students to even put in their email line as they kind of develop a, a professional identity. Plus then it's, it's just always there, right? They've got, they've got their, their, their five strengths. Um, I love this resource here that Gallup created. I don't think it's been uh, widely publicized uh, enough about teach with your strengths. Well, the assessment is the exact same. This actually goes line by line and puts your top five strengths into context as to how you might utilize your five strengths in a classroom environment. Now, Gallup would ask that you pay about $24 for the, uh, uh, for the textbook. Today, I'm willing to open up and I've got all the uh, PDFs of all 34 strengths in context with this, uh, with this uh, book. So once you take your top five strengths, shoot me an email, send me your top five strengths because I'm gonna send everybody an access code who hasn't yet taken the assessment or if you've taken the assessment, send me your top five, and then I'll send you the five PDFs that then speak directly to your five strengths. And for, for our curriculum and instruction education uh, faculty in here, if you wanna utilize this resource with your students, I'd be happy if you invite me to one of your Canvas courses, I'd be happy to just upload all 34 PDFs directly for your uh, students to, uh, to, to use. Gallup's cool with that. Gallup's cool with that because at the, uh, at the end of the day, right, Gallup wants students to have resources to then be active strengths champions. And Gallup's uh, platform is the more strengths coaches, the more strengths advocates we have in our school systems, the likelihood that other faculty and uh, faculty are then going to ask students to engage in this, then all of a sudden more people are taking the assessment. So yeah, they are, they are good. Plus with the fair use, uh, if we're only using five of the uh, PDFs, we're, we're, we're covered by copyright law too. So it's, uh, it's, it's good either way, but Gallup is, uh, is, is in support of that. So we're 100% we're good to go there on the uh, 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 sharing, sharing resources to get students connected and to then let you think creatively, how do other educators use your same strengths in creative ways to, 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 to move forward? Uh, and, and that's kind of where, where we'll talk right now. So, so my strengths are woo, communication, positivity, adaptability, and, uh, and, and, and maximizer. Hopefully if you spend enough time with me, you'd kind of say, yeah, gosh, Mike, in the first five or six minutes, we already see your, uh, your, your strengths in, uh, in, in action. That's what we want our students to, uh, to, uh, to, to do. How is it that we can start to live our strengths uh, so they can be seen in our, uh, in our behaviors, in our actions? Uh, and so here's how I use my strengths in the, uh, in the classroom. And I think the importance of this exercise is once you've identified your top five strengths, how are you then creatively using your strengths in the, uh, in the classroom? So number one, woo. Uh, I think names are really important. And if I know your name, then I have an instant clue to kind of engage you in the conversation. Uh, I work really hard teaching 700 uh, first semester freshmen in LEAD 212. I work really hard throughout the semester to try to get to know each and every one of my students by name, because if I know their name, I can call on them and they can't hide in a class of uh, 150 or, or, or 200 students. So uh, woo is defined as winning others over and uh, naturally talented at breaking the ice. So uh, I love a good connection piece. Uh, especially in my small classes, I always ask students to have some sort of a pair share or report out so they can hear their voice in the classroom in the first five minutes before we even start with any kind of content 
or, uh, or, or curriculum. I think it's important that students own their experience as part of a learning community, as opposed to just showing up, sitting, uh, getting content, and then leaving. So uh, my plug here is that as really good educators, what are we doing to make sure that every student can at least hear their voice in the classroom each and every day, even if it's just a, uh, just a pair share? Um, communication. Communication Gallup defines as people especially talented in uh, taking ideas and, uh, and, and bringing them to life. Uh, any idea I think I've ever had, I've, I've been able to uh, clearly communicate that idea to others. And right now I've been doing a lot of work with Brene Brown and her book on vulnerability and thinking how can we bring in elements in our classroom to make sure that students are willing to, uh, to, to, to be vulnerable right, to, uh, to, to, to model what that looks like. And so I've been really intentional about clear is kind and unclear is unkind. That came from Brene Brown. And I think sometimes as faculty, we make an assignment so dang difficult so students are trying to figure out what it is that we're trying to expect of them as opposed to putting all their energy into the actual learning that goes on. So how can we be crystal clear with our expectations of uh, here's the process, here's what we'd like from you, and then let students put their energy not towards trying to figure out our expectations, but to put their energy towards the actual learning uh, because we've been clear, we've got good expectations, and uh, uh, students understand and, and, and can track that. Uh, my strength of positivity, right? At the end of the day, uh, I love to uh, kind of be a, a cheerleader, if you will, for, uh, for, for students, right? And an encourager to constantly be that voice to say, hey, you can, uh, you can motor through this, you can push on, uh, you'll persist. Uh, we, we might be stuck today, but think about where we could be tomorrow. And I'm always asking them, What's your challenge? How can you utilize your strengths to overcome said challenge and put a plan together to move forward? Um, I think sometimes in our uh, positions as educators, we've got a lot of authority and students are willing to default to us and they ask us a lot of questions. And so it's really easy to all of a sudden become uh, experts in uh, advice giving. But yet we're giving advice that has probably been shaped by our talents and our five strengths. Uh, I share with my students uh, lots of times, uh, when I was a freshman here at Kansas State University, I wasn't uh, uh, reaching my academic goals first semester. And so I called home and I said, Dad, I'm struggling. I need some advice. And you know what? That's exactly what my dad gave me. He said, Michael, what's wrong? I told him what was wrong. And he said, here's how you fix it. I need you to wake up at 7.30 every morning, uh, regardless of what time class is, get on campus by about 8.15. Uh, uh, in between classes, find a study space, recopy your notes, uh, put everything together, stay on campus until about four o'clock. If you uh, work from 8.15 to four o'clock, you'll uh, have everything good to go. And in the evenings, you can go to the rec, you can hang out with friends, you can do whatever, because you did your job as a full-time student that day. And I said, Dad, gosh, that's great advice. That's exactly what I needed to hear. Guess what time I woke up the next, the next morning? 10, 10, 10, 10 05. I had a 10 30, <laughs> right? So I, I put none of that into action. None of that into action. Well, my dad has the strength of uh, uh, strategic, right? Analytic, uh, learner, uh, input. So he's kind of thinking through how could he navigate through his day to get things, uh, things done. I've got the strength of woo, communication, positivity. I just wanted to be around people, right? Uh, so what would that have looked like if dad would have said, Michael, what are the, where are the classes that you're doing well in? And I'd have told him. The classes where I earned A's were classes where I felt connected to other people and I felt like I had community. The classes where I earned C's, I didn't know my professor by name. My professor sure as heck didn't know me by name. And I just went and sat and was kind of a spectator of my own education. But the minute that I was engaged in community and or were sitting next to friends, I, uh, I, I did a lot better in those, in those classes, which makes sense because my strengths tell me that I'm a relationship and influencer. Uh, so, so adaptability. Gosh, as teachers, I'm constantly reminded of the six Ps. Proper preparation prevents piss poor performance. It only takes about one time per semester for me to say, hey, I've got this. I've been teaching it for 10 years. I'm just going to go with the flow and uh, roll into class. 
And then that class is horrible. And I start to think, oh my gosh, what went wrong? How come my delivery wasn't on point? Uh, where are my students? And then sometimes I'll blame my students for my poor, poor, poor performance, right? And then I remember, oh, I didn't really lesson plan. I just took something off the shelf from last semester that worked well, but yet the world around us has changed since last semester. And so what is it in terms of putting in current events or new research articles, uh, so I'm not still using stuff from 2012, but that it's engaging students in the process of learning. And every time I go back through to rearrange my lesson plan, I win, right? It, it, it works. And my strength of adaptability, if I've actually planned and thought, how might I tweak this lecture? Uh, generally, what happens is uh, if I see students engaging, I'll keep moving through. And or if I see my students saying, wow, Mike, you're moving at a, at, a, at a pace far faster than we are. I think my strength of adaptability empowers me to say, Mike, get away from the lesson plan right now. This lesson plan, for whatever reason, they're just not ready to hear it today. So let's crumple it up, throw it away, and let's meet your students where they are as opposed to where I am. I think that's been a powerful uh, opportunity to increase students' uh, engagement in the classroom. And especially working with first semester freshmen, I know in the years that I've been teaching, there's at least going to be one day out of the semester where students are going to come in and they're just going to look exhausted, they're going to look drained, and they're going to need something other than the content that I had prepared that day. And so when I see that, typically it happens around mid-semester. Uh, students are uh, homesick. They've gone through about one and or two first rounds of uh, uh, tests. They're realizing, ah, the 4.0 I so desperately wanted at the beginning of the semester just might not be a reality right now. So how can I just hang on? And uh, I'll look at my students and I'll just say, hey, you know, let's just throw this lesson plan out today and let's just talk about you. How are you doing? Which then gets back to this idea of well-being. And then I'll tell them, I want to know about your well-being. What's your purpose looking like? What are the relationships looking like? Uh, tell me about your roommate. Uh, how are you navigating your, uh, your space across campus outside of this class? And then I'll ask students to simply do an exercise with me, which is uh, uh, about metaphors. And I'll simply say, being a first semester freshman on K-State's campus is a lot like being in the ocean. Describe for me the ocean. And then students will come up with wonderful uh, uh, ways to describe the ocean, the weather, the waves, the sharks. And so students are making connections metaphorically to how they're actually feeling as a, uh, as, as a student. Some of them say they have life preservers. Others say that, hey, I'm swimming hard, but I'm not getting any closer to the, uh, to the island. And then those are all cues that we can kind of connect with, uh, with, with, with our students. And then my maximizer, my maximizer and my positivity, I think work hand in hand, uh, especially with uh, upper level students. I never uh, accept anything really on draft one because I always think we can be a little bit better tomorrow than we were today. Uh, so uh, I do a lot of uh, one, two and or three drafts and or call it work in progress because I don't think learning ever stops uh, when somebody hands in an assignment and says, boom, shh, I've checked that box. I think it's constantly always around us. And so my maximizer uh, and my positivity will say, hey, Rachel, good, I like it, and think what it could look like if we added in X, Y, and Z. Let's play with that idea, uh, and uh, let's resubmit, rewrite, and, uh, and, and, and move forward. And it's not always a resubmit, rewrite. Sometimes it's a, uh, let's think about that. Uh, let's add a, a couple of other layers to it and then come into my office and let's have a conversation about where we were when you handed this draft in and then where you are now. So uh, I think sometimes we uh, uh, potentially just uh, uh, write our students to death with reflections. What would that look like to open up opportunities for, uh, for, for conversations? And again, y'all, some of you are like, whoa, that's way too many one-on-one -on -one conversations to have with my students. But again, I'm playing to my strengths. I've got the strength of communication. I would much rather sit down and talk one-on-one -on -one with a student than uh, read through a whole bunch of written reflection papers. So again, the more that we as faculty know our strengths, 
I think then we can create systems and structures that play to our strengths as educators uh, and then also work for, uh, work for students. Uh, so again, that's, that's, that's why I share that example. Uh, some of you have seen this slide before, but I think it's uh, important for all of us to, uh, to, to lock in on as educators. Where might your focus be if uh, uh, your son or daughter came home with these grades? Which grades are you going to deem worthy as considerable conversation? You're going to talk to all of them equally. I love it. I love it. On the D or F? D or F? Yep, what they were doing well. Yeah, what's going really well, and then what's going uh, what's going wrong? The A. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, gang. So here's the uh, here's what the research had to say. Gallup uh, called parents, and eighty six point seven percent of parents basically said, "Hey, we're going to talk about the uh, uh, the D or the F." which just reminds me that I think our students are constantly aware of their deficits uh, in the classroom, uh, outside the classroom. And, and we tend to always focus on what's wrong as opposed to, uh, to, to what's strong. And so if we call a student into our, uh, into our office and, and or if a student says, hey, could I get some time? Generally, when students aren't doing well, they email me and say, hey, Mike, can I set up a time to talk to you? And I'm like, yeah, absolutely. And so the whole thing was generated from a, uh, from a deficit based. I'm not doing as well as I thought I was doing. Let me go in and talk to, uh, talk to Mike. And so my, my initial thought is, well, let's talk about why the student came in because uh, they're not turning their assignments in in time and or uh, they're not doing what they need to be doing to earn the grades that, they, uh, that, that they're doing well. And so students wanna talk about that, but for the first 10, 15 minutes, I'll say, where are you thriving on campus? Tell me, where are you doing well? And in this class, what are some of the elements that have really captured your imagination and interest? And so we talk about what's going right and what's going well. And then I say, so what is it that you're doing really, really well? And how could you translate that into some areas where you might not be performing at the level that you're doing the best? Um, I got some really, really great uh, 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 counseling a couple years ago. And one of my students, uh, marriage and family health, and I just said, tell me about some of the best advice you've ever given a, a, a couple. And she goes, Mike, I work lots of times with couples who are thinking about divorce, but they're not really there yet. And so I get a chance to work with couples at that pivotal stage in their marriage as to either A, we're going to move through this and uh, get, get better on the other side, or we're going to break and we're going to split up. And I go, wow, okay, I wasn't into it for, uh, for, for that, but I, I'd love to hear, love to hear your, uh, your, your advice. And she goes, Mike, I just ask every couple, what are the things in your professional life that you're doing really, really well that's giving you a whole bunch of accolades professionally that then you're not doing in your marriage? And I thought, wow, how cool is that? I go in on Sundays to, uh, to, to work and to grade papers. Then it's kind of like, uh-oh, well, if I'm going in on Sundays to attend to my work, what am I doing on Sunday to attend to my marriage, right? It's that whole idea where we spend our time indicates where we have number one top priority. And I think the same could be said to, uh, to students, where are you doing really well across campus? Now, the things you're doing well in that space, how can you transition that same idea into this space uh, to uh, you know, uh, uh, up, your, uh, up your game a little bit? And then students go, oh, yeah. You know, I recopy my notes in uh, uh, cultural anthropology. I don't recopy my notes in LEAD 212. Maybe if I did that, now all of a sudden, I'd be able to raise that, uh, raise that grade up a little bit. And I go, hmm, not too bad. Yep. So I think that's that's important. The other piece from an educator uh, is, uh, is is I always share this story because this uh, this this was a pivotal point in, in, in my life, even though I didn't realize it at the time. But what do you want to know right now about my seventh grade band card report? Right, Rachel. <laughs> Rachel, wait a second. Didn't we just talk about the A's? Yep. Right. And how quickly we still focus in on the uh, on the deficit, 
gang, we are programmed people to focus in on, on deficit, even though we just talked about it. But Rachel doesn't want to talk about my A-plus in social studies, right? She wants to talk about my C-minus. Well, my mom was no different. And so mom called Mr. Burden, my band teacher, because uh, she asked me, why am I getting a C minus in band? And I looked at my mom and I said, mom, Mr. Burden does not like me. Took no responsibility for my learning, right? So mom called Mr. Burden and said, how come my son's getting a C minus in band? And uh, Mr. Burden says, Barb, your son's not your daughter. Gosh, my sister, three years older than me, first chair clarinet. And uh, so sure enough, uh, uh, Mr. Burden said, well, the reason for his C minus is I put sheet music in front of him and he's naturally talented at picking up the, uh, the rhythm, but he can't read the sheet music. He doesn't know all the pedals in the, uh, in the bar. And my mom goes, he plays the drums. He doesn't even have to distinguish between A, B, C. He's like, I know your son's challenged, but the, uh, uh I did appreciate Mr. Burden. He, he said, now, Barb, we moved him from the snare drum to the bass drum. And gang, that was fantastic, right? Because a, a high energy guy like me, boom, boom. And then I'd get rocking and rolling and I'd go so fast that I'd mess up the whole band. The, uh, uh, and so then he put me on the cymbals and that was kind of neat too. The cymbals were, uh, were, were, were fantastic, but he put me on the, uh, on the cymbals. And so sure enough, uh, out of the songs we were playing that term, we only used the cymbals once, but when he pointed at me, I was there, I was, I was, ready, I was ready to go. But, you know, I share that story because you can imagine my mom's strategy for me to become more proficient in band three nights a week. I would go home and I would play and practice, uh, practice uh, the, the drums. And yet my mom never called Mrs. Mater, never called Mrs. Mater one bit to say, wow, you're doing exceptional work in getting our son engaged in the classroom. What could we do as parents who are concerned uh, and, and excited about his education to put more of that material in front of him because he's got some talent, he's got some energy, let's, uh, let's, let's move forward and see how far this goes. You know, that conversation never happened. And so as educators, if we're constantly creating space in our calendars to talk to students who are earning Ds and Fs, my question is, are we spending the exact same amount of time uh, in one-on-one -on -one conversations talking about the students who are earning A's? Because those are the students who could be our next Fulbright. Those are the students who could be our next uh, 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 department scholars that then go on to grad school and do some wonderful things. But right now, they might not know how ex exceptionally talented they are because they're earning A's and they have high standards to earn their A's, but yet without a little motivation and or extra push from us as faculty to say, you know what, you are just knocking it out of the park in this class. My gosh, I would love for you to be a TA of mine. The student might not ever have an interest in being a TA of yours, but the fact that you identified them as a student that has potential to be a TA, think about what that might mean to them. That means more than any A plus on, a, uh, on, on, on an exam and or feedback. And so every year I quantify how, many, how much of my time am I spending on students who email me, say, hey, Mike, I'm not doing well. Can I come in to talk? The answer is always yes. And so then I quantify how many times I'm spending with students who are earning Ds and Fs. And then all of a sudden I say, now how many times am I engaging with my high ability students who are doing exactly what I want to, but then uh, we don't ever really engage in meaningful conversation or to, or to, or to continually push and, uh, and, and, and give them the affirmation that, that they so desperately need. Uh, that's, that's what I think is, is, is important to our learners. And so why would we do this in a classroom? Why would, as an educator, would it be important for you to not only identify your students' strengths, but uh, to maybe uh, uh, encourage students to take this assessment? Number one, it's just all about engagement. Students who uh, uh, know that their organization is invested in their strengths, gosh, uh, from a leadership lens, that's 73% engagement. So if I'm a student and if I know my faculty member cares enough to know about me and my talents, I'm gonna be more likely to engage in what that faculty member is asking of me to do that semester. But if my faculty member just says, hey, here's the content, here are the learning objectives, this is what I expect of each and every one of you, and you pay no mind to the uniqueness of who I am and or my lived experiences as to how I ended up here in the first place, now, all of a sudden, my engagement might, might drop off uh, significantly unless I just love the content. 
And some of us teach content that not everybody loves, but it might be a gen ed requirement to get them along the way to, uh, to, 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 to move forward in their, uh, in, their, in their education. So I think this is, this is what we're trying to do. Uh, and, you know, I can look in my classroom and I probably see about 30% who are engaged. I can then see about another 30% who are not engaged. And then I can see a small portion of students who are actively disengaged. And I think strengths opens up the opportunity. It opens up the door for us as educators to ask the question of why, what's going on, and how can we potentially move the students who are actively disengaged to disengaged and then disengaged students to engaged students because how they show up in our classrooms, I think is sometimes a direct result as to how they might show up in the communities where they live and work. And so if I can get a student trained to keep their mind where their feet are in the classroom, I think the higher uh, probability that then they, they, they keep their mind where their feet are in the community to be more intentional about helping to solve the uh, uh, existing systemic problems that, that, that exist. Um, Strengths team grids, a lot of faculty will sometimes use these team grids as they bring students into small groups. And what I love about this is many times our students will uh, uh, say, what do we need to do to get done with the assignment as fast as we possibly can? And it'll basically be a uh, delegation of responsibility. You do section A and B, I'll do C and D, uh, you do E and F, and then we'll uh, put everything together. And Mike, you present next week, Tuesday, wrap it all up for us. Well, because K-State's a strengths-based campus, one could think, Every student at one point in time at least had access to their top five strengths. So what would it look like if we as educators and or students start to take more of an, initi an, an initiative to say before we start on this group project, what would that look like if we identified everybody's strengths as they exist in the four different domains of who's the executor, who's the influencer, who's the relationship builder, and then who's the strategic thinker? Because if I can find my role in this team, I might have a higher probability to engage in group work um, uh, uh, in terms of, of what it is that I enjoy and how I can complement my, uh, my other team members. The other thing is I've worked with a lot of students over in leadership studies who have high talent in executing and they think, you know, I really, I really was worried about so-and-so not meeting deadlines, but, I didn't want to ruffle anybody's feathers and or uh, say, hey, uh, this is this is not not uh, uh, not OK. So so I didn't use my achiever or discipline or responsibility to ask that student when they were going to finish up and uh, submit their uh, uh, their 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 work to the team. And I thought, gosh, that's exactly what the team needed. That's exactly what your peer needed uh, because he and or she is sitting there maybe thinking, hey, I'm a perceiver on my Myers-Briggs, uh, ENFP or ISTJ. I'm just ready to kind of go with the flow. People need others to kind of hold them accountable for the, uh, for the group to move forward. And so I think sometimes getting this grid in front of students, having students talk through this grid as to how their strengths might show up in the group process uh, uh, is a catalyst for good conversation and dialogue and anything that we might do around, uh, uh, around, around groups. Uh, uh, gang, that was quick, but I wanted to make sure that I opened it up for, uh, for, for conversation uh, and uh, uh, anything that you might have to say so we could share as a learning community about best practices, best ideas, where your mind might be uh, around how you might incorporate strengths, not just in your teaching to help you, uh, but also to maybe uh, integrate the strengths concept in a, uh, in, in, in a class or a lab that you're, uh, that you're working with undergrads around. Yes. So your table that had the students and then what their top five were, um, I work with online students and I, it's sometimes it's hard to, to kind of get all this information and then have somewhere convenient to store it. So I was kind of thinking about maybe you could use Google Forms and have the students submit their top five because in that Google Form you can put it into a spreadsheet and you have it all there. So I appreciated that because think about how, you know, then we can make sure that our students are and then us as instructors or support staff, then we have that in one location.
you know, diseases that just hit control F by their name. And mm -hmm. Yeah, ab absolutely. And uh, uh, another win that we had uh, in our online uh, leadership uh, uh, lead to twelve courses, we do a uh, we do an online eight week course in the uh, in the fall semester. And we we've, we've always said, gosh, if leadership is all about building relationships, how are we helping students build relationships as online learners? And so one thing that we've done is we've actually asked students to submit videos of themselves online talking about significant lived experiences and how their strengths played into those experiences as they introduce themselves to their online learners and we found that that engages uh, students far more than the uh, than, than than the message boards of constantly always responding or reflecting or uh, post and then uh, reply to two or three, uh, we find that if students do short little video introductions of themselves or tape record themselves, uh, then the hits, uh, the students tend to engage a little bit more on the, on, on the video piece. So the only way to get a chart like that is to ask the students to report theirs, like there's no... Um, yeah, yeah. Now, the, the good thing is, is I can send out a blank team grid for everybody in this room. So if I send out the team grid, then it's really simple for you to just pass the team grid out in class and say, hey, will you fill out your top five strengths? And then if you want to, you could uh, uh, put it up in, uh, in, in, in electronic form and then post it to a, uh, to a class. Uh, but yeah, so there is some manual lifting in the, in the process. Um, I have my students do name tests, and um, one side's their name, the other side is all five of their strengths. And so they're seeing it every day, but they're also seeing each other's every day. Yeah. Do they put their strengths on both sides of their name tent? No. Oh, that'd be, that'd be kind of cool. No, on, on the name side, um, they draw pictures of what's most important to them. Mm -hmm. They've got to visualize what they have as their strengths, but it's something that they always do. We also play strengths bingo. Yeah, tell me about strengths bingo, because that's... That, that could be good for others. Is it, is it online someplace? It's from Gallup. Um, mm -hmm. Basically, you get, a, a, you get bingo cards handed out to students and they have to find other people with their same, well, I have them, find other people with their same strengths and in our context, how does your strengths help you be a leader? Okay. Um, so they have to introduce themselves, find somebody with their strengths and we play blackout bingo and I get really close. Um, but at least they know each other then and they have something to connect with. Um, it's interesting kind of the trends that go through because my first year here we had no woos and every year since there I'm getting more and more woos in the PowerPoint. Nice. But nice. we're really short on strategic. <laughs> really short on strategic. Mm -hmm. I, I love that idea. Um, Tom Matson from Gallup came down and I said, Tom, is, is, is we're helping other people across campus become strengths champions. What, what might be the recipe to do so? And he said, Mike, people who are interested in strengths, ask them what are two things that they're doing right now in their classroom or in their division of student life? What are two things that are working really, really well? And people will tell you what's working well, right? You all right know, you, you all right now know exactly what's working well in your classroom, what's been working well for you. And so then Tom would say, integrate strengths into what's already working well for you. Because if you can integrate strengths into what's working well, number one, you'll find out that strengths is not asking or requiring you to really do anything else. It's not an add-on. It's just an integration uh, to further kind of uh, uh, accent what's already working well. And then assess it. And my guess is, since it was working well before, now you overlaid strengths on top of it, and you'll see even extra benefits. Now, that will give you the confidence to then overlay strengths on something that's not working well in your classroom. And then you can measure, now, because we integrated strengths in this uh, lesson plan or module that wasn't working well, uh, did it uh, positively impact the learning and or the engagement of our students? Uh, we did that years ago when we started doing a lot with uh, service learning. And uh, uh, we've, we've for a long time done service learning out in the Manhattan community, but it was amazing once we integrated strengths into our service learning teams and asked students to start to build teams around uh, their, uh, uh, their top five strengths, 
gosh, the engagement just skyrocketed uh, as uh, 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 an extra boost to, uh, to, to, to what students were uh, uh, experiencing in their small teams. So I, I love that. The more touch points, the, uh, the, the better. What else? Questions? I have to ask this because I, uh, this is my first term teaching. My second class period, I told their whole group, I'm not asking for this yet, but by such and such date, I want everyone to have their strengths quiz done, and then we're going to work with that. And right away, one of my probably higher level students said, Ms. Lynn, do we have to do this? Because we already did this in leadership studies. And I'm going, oh my gosh, I was going to use all the you know, basic, you know, start with this to help. And if I've got like five students in leadership, I'm thinking, I've got to find a, something, kind of an activity so that they're not, you know, uh, vocal and, and they let the rest of my class kind of learn it. And I just, I assure, I'm sure there's some kind of a resource somewhere where I could get like this mm -hmm. video, but I had heard about that one. So I assume that's been used for you guys. So where can I look for another activity to kind of build that in? You bet. We've got a, we've got a whole resource guide. So if you want to send me an email and say, hey, Mike, can you help me look for some extra additional uh, activities? I can send you out a whole packet that, uh, that could, potentially, uh, could potentially work for you. The other, the other thing that I'm constantly reminded about is some students will say, hey, we've already done that in this class. And my response is, yes. Yes, you have done that, but you've done it with different people. And strengths is more about being interested than it is about being interesting. And so therefore, if we're making a commitment to our learning, we should make a commitment to learn about uh, our peers in the classroom. And so while you may have done a strengths treasure hunt and gone around and talked to other people about their strengths, you haven't talked to people in this space about their strengths. And so we're going to do this exercise because it's important to our building relationships here in our, uh, in, in, in our learning community. Uh, and students are lots of times will go, oh yeah, yeah, I could, I could do that. And while they might be a little resistant on the front end, typically then I'll follow up with that student and say, as other students were asking about your strengths in action, did you learn anything new about yourself today? And they'll always go, you know what? Yes, because I'm thinking about my strengths a little differently now as a sophomore or junior, as opposed to maybe what I was experiencing when I was a, a, a freshman. Uh, so I think strengths always has uh, validity in different spaces and contexts across the, uh, uh, our lifespan. Great question. What else? I bring it up because we did kind of a the Myers Briggs type thing at work, and one of my um, coworkers said they were in the experience in their office where somebody, you know, had a certain profile or a certain personality type, and they decided that they weren't the right person in their job, and they needed um, mm. like, they were ready to turn in their resignation letter. Yeah, just start that typing. Yeah. Yeah. The, uh, uh, so number one, I always talk about strengths is a place to start a conversation, right? Just like any assessment, we all are our own experts as to what we buy into and what we, uh, what we reject. And so I also tell students, while I'm a big strengths fan, I'm also a fan of self-authorship. And so use this as a, uh, as a tool, but don't necessarily let it be the end-all be-all of, uh, of, of your identity. The other piece where a lot of the research is coming out, uh, we're talking a lot about strengths uh, and the strengths integration on predominantly uh, uh, white, uh, uh, white campuses, right? Uh, and to what extent are we not creating the space to allow students uh, to reject their, uh, their, their top five uh, and give voice to say, hey, I, I don't think this is me, but yet if we're, if we're all strengths champions, we're probably gonna be quick to be like, oh, you missed something. Well, maybe I didn't miss anything at all, and may, maybe <clears throat> I'm just not identifying with my strength because uh, uh, I've seen this in my culture and or in uh, my own walk of life and experience 
as a, uh, as a negative. And so now all of a sudden I've got this talent that's saying it's a strength, but yet I'm now getting mixed messages about how I interact and engage with the world around me. And I think we need to be uh, willing to, uh, uh, to listen and then coach students not to where everybody identifies with their top five strengths, but to where they can um, uh, push back and then have clear reasons as to why they'd push back. And then we go, great, good, yeah, I agree, right? Uh, if, if two of your strengths work for you, use those two, but these other three, let's find some other avenues to, uh, to, to, to build that around. Uh, and so I think that's, that's an important uh, space to, to, to be in. I, I'd be happy to send an article out. In fact, I'm gonna do a strengths uh, 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 talk on this recent article that talked about uh, strengths quest uh, being institutionalized on college campuses and what's the potential risk of doing that to our uh, uh, historically uh, uh, marginalized student uh, student groups, and it's it's fascinating. It's interesting. It's a it's an article that's that's really getting a lot of conversation around uh, strengths education, and I'd be happy to share it with everybody in this room as yet one other extra resource to think about uh, in the strengths conversation, especially if a student looks at their results and says, "I don't agree," and if that student is representative, uh, represents a, uh, 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 an underrepresented population in higher ed, uh, then, then, then let's, let's really uh, uh, affirm that and say, that's, that's okay, that's, that's all right, you bet. I have another question. Yeah. So uh, I wonder if it's appropriate to um, ask my students also to reflect not only on their strength and how they can use it for you know to accomplish all these things but if they're not careful how could they overuse it and then either alienate others is that okay to ask that or like should right now as a freshman should i just kind of stay out of that that's 100% okay to uh to ask and in fact gallup has a pdf that says barrier labels and i can also send that out to this group because it will it will explicitly share all the shadow sides of each of the strengths that if we leverage it again and again and again, uh, all of a sudden we're wearing people out as, as opposed to inviting them into a, uh, into a conversation. The other piece that I love about that is say, say my woo is a trigger point for somebody else in this, uh, in this room. Uh, the barrier labels will indicate uh, what Wu looks like, not as a strength, but as a shadow side. And I think it also helps people say, gosh, that's traditionally what I think when I meet a person like that, but then what, have I might, what might I be missing if I saw that as a strength as opposed to a, uh, to a deficit? So it helps us build the complementary partners. Yep, we can, we'd be happy to share all those resources. Yeah. So we're out of time, but please help me in thanking Mike for being here today. Thank you, thank you, thank you.